within every genre of music, there are certain bands and certain artists that are so influential that whenever they release a new album, bands have to stop and take notice. For heavy metal, Iron Maiden is definitely one of these bands. They have been around for so long, released so many classic albums, had so many great songs, and even have several albums that fans would consider amongst the best metal albums of all time. Here in 2015, they've released their album Book of Souls. Now, if you're looking for another reviewer who's going to praise this album to the heavens, say it's the greatest thing ever, their masterpiece, etc., etc., you're not going to get that here. If that's what you want to hear, then you should just go ahead and hit the back button. I won't hold it against you and move on. Just keep in mind going forward that reviews are opinion based and this review is my opinion on the album. Now I'll start off simply by saying that if you like everything the band has been doing from Brave New World onward then you're going to like this album. If you like Brave New World which is the last album I've liked by this band, if you like Dance of Death, A Matter of Life and Death, and Final Frontier, you're going to like this. However, if these albums don't really do it for you, then you should still listen to the album just to hear what it sounds like, but probably be prepared to give it a pass. It's up on YouTube. You can listen to it without buying it, so I would just say just do that. Though if you like the album, I recommend buying it. This is essentially a continuation of what they've been doing, that kind of progressive style, a bunch of long songs. This album, in some cases, the songs are even longer, though. They've got three songs that are over 10 minutes and one that's somewhere around 20 minutes. Now, one positive thing I can say about this album is I do find it slightly better. Well, musically, I find it better than The Final Frontier. I have felt like each album, starting with Dance of Death onward, has gotten progressively worse. And so the fact that I do find it to be a little better than Final Frontier is something. At least on a musical standpoint, I find it better. Quality of the songwriting, I feel like, is about the same. and has been pretty much the same from Dance of Death onward. Again, my opinion. And really, my issue with this album, like the others, is just there's just not much that stands out to me. I find these songs mostly to be filler tracks. They're okay, they're not necessarily bad, but there's very little that makes me want to come back and listen. There aren't any catchy choruses. There are very few catchy riffs, and... Just no catchy solos. There's just no hooks, basically. And the few moments that do kind of stick out to me a little bit are spread out amongst a bunch of different songs. So, like, you could have a cool verse in one song, a cool chorus in another song, a cool intro in another track, and maybe another killer riff somewhere else, but they don't put it all together into one, you know, really awesome song. It's just little bits and pieces of songs that... I kind of like, and then not enough around the little bits and pieces to make one solid track, really. I say this, there are a couple of songs I kind of like, but overall, I just, I just find like I can listen to this album and not really remember a whole lot going on here. And again, these songs aren't necessarily bad, but they're just not really that great either. I mean, if you mixed any of these songs with four or five standout tracks, they're perfectly listenable, but 90 minutes of filler tracks just to me just doesn't do it. So If Eternity Should Fall starts the album off, and it has kind of a cool little intro. This is one of the songs I do enjoy on this album. I'm not going to go through every track, I'm just going to kind of go through the ones that I feel like I have something I can say about it. Uh, this song starts off with an intro that kind of makes me think a little bit of Pink Floyd, like something maybe they would have done back in the day. And you've got Bruce doing kind of a bit of a different vocal styling on it, and it's actually kind of cool. The song ends up being more of a typical up-tempo Maiden-style song, and it's got nice pacing to it. I like the verses just fine. The chorus to me, I like the basic idea. I think it, I think it's missing something that really brings the song together, but I think it's also good enough that it doesn't make the song a bad song or even one that I would refuse to listen to. I do find this to be one of the two tracks that I, I do pretty well enjoy. I think if they had had some backing vocals in part portions of the chorus, I think this would have been pretty good. Uh, Bruce kind of sings in a lower register for him, and I think if he had dubbed himself singing in a higher pitch or had a backing vocalist on there, to kind of help fill that out a little bit more, I think it could have had more of a punch to it. 
I also really like the acoustic part at the end, but I don't care for the talking that goes on over it. I just would like to hear the acoustic guitars. I don't really need the talking that goes on over that. I'm guessing that's part of this being a concept album, but for me, it just doesn't really do it. Speed of Light is next, and this one kind of stands out to me in that it's actually a shorter song. It's a pretty fast-paced song, pretty typical. It's actually not bad, but it's just kind of one that doesn't really do a whole lot for me. I think with a catchy chorus, this could have been an awesome song, but I don't know. It just ends up being, again, one of those okay tracks for me. The Red and the Black is one of those songs that a lot of people just list as one of their highlights for this album, but for me, it's... It's not really so much. I would tell you that most of these songs aren't necessarily bad. They're just not really good either. But this song is almost reaching that bad point. And I would actually say this is my least favorite song to come out in the 2000s by this band. Now, I say that because it's not necessarily bad, but because of the wasted potential in here. The musical composition of this song I find to be amongst the strongest of 2000s Maiden. I like the intro. I like the main riff. It's the first of several long tracks as well. But I, I think it's generally pretty solid. And the chorus melody is also something very memorable, but we'll get into my issues with the chorus here in a second. One of my two issues with the song is the first set of vocals by Bruce. I'm, I'm a fan of his, but this was like nails on a chalkboard. It was just sounded very off-key, and I, I, I just, it was very grating to hear, and I did not like it at all. And then the chorus, which, like I said, had a, a strong melody, unfortunately, instead of having lyrics, it just consists of a bunch of whoa, 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 whoa's. And it worked for a song like The Trooper, which was a lot shorter, but for that song, it was two lines and you're done. It was like probably 10 seconds of that, and that's it. Whereas this is at least four lines per chorus, if not longer. I can't remember. I haven't listened to the song in a while because of it. And to me, these aspects really just kind of bring the song down. It's one of those tracks that I feel like could have been really awesome if they had just done a little more, put a little more work into it. But unfortunately, they just didn't. Death or Glory is the other track that I really enjoy on this album. Again, it's kind of an up-tempo track. I kind of like the groove in this one, and this one has a chorus that kind of does a little bit of what I was talking about they should have done in If Eternity Should Fall. They kind of layer a couple of Bruce Dickinson vocal recordings over each other, and to me it gives the song a little bit more of a punch. The chorus is kind of simple, but for what the song is, it kind of works. It kind of sounds like one of those songs that could be a single. The title track, Book of Souls, it has a cool acoustic intro and kind of makes me really would like to hear Iron Maiden do an acoustic track. But the pacing of the song just, I don't know, this sounds like the song is stuck in mud or something. I can't, I can't not get into the pacing of the song at all. However, what makes the song stand out to me and why I talk about it is one of the guitar riffs in the instrumental break. It actually has the best guitar riff on the album. It's really cool. If, if you don't mind the pacing to the song, this is, actually is not a terrible song. The chorus is even okay, I just wish the verses had been stronger. Or they just made that riff that I like, the primary riff of the song, and that would have been awesome. Tears of the Clown has kind of a cool mid-tempo pacing to it. The lyrics are really depressing, but on my last listen, this one kind of started to grow on me a little bit, so I don't know if this is one that I can end up liking or not. I'll just kind of have to see. And then we have Empire of the Clouds, which closes out this album with a mammoth track. This is the one that's approaching 10 minutes, or no, it's exceeding 10 minutes, approaching 20 minutes. And this one has some cool parts to it, other parts that I don't really care for. I really like the piano sections to this. The piano sections with kind of the clean guitar and some violins over it. I think musically there's, there's some good moments in this song. I, it doesn't really do a whole lot for me. Again, you know, I've already stated how filler I find most of these tracks. But at least there are a few standout moments in that track that I think are kind of cool. But overall, we end up with an album where we've got two songs that I like a little bit and another song I might put into that category if I listen to it a little more, which I will. 
but I just don't find any of these songs to be particularly great. And in order for me to give an album a really strong rating, I need at least a couple tracks that I would put into the category of must-have Iron Maiden songs. And there's just not one song on here, nor was there on Final Frontier. And so I'm just going to have to go ahead and give this album a 45 out of 100, which is me being kind of generous, kind of giving them some credit for at least getting a little better musically over their past album. It's not the worst thing in the world, but this one just doesn't really do a whole lot for me.